We head out to the Bay Area in the National League West. The San Francisco Giants. They were uh, they, they they had won uh, over a hundred games in twenty twenty one, and then in twenty twenty two they come back and they are an eighty one and eighty one team. Obviously, uh, aging uh, aging out a number of the uh, the old World Series players for them. Uh, and we're getting a new look at, uh, at at some new Giants here. So let's talk, uh, Jim, here about the San Francisco offseason. Do they make themselves better than a 500 team with what they did? I'm not sure they made them better than a 500 team, but I think they had a good offseason. You know, I, I think it's unfortunate they made a run at Aaron Judge. They offered him $360 million at the time. No one else had offered anywhere close to that. The Yankees later matched it, and well, the Padres ended up offering over four hundred. Um, but then they they rebounded, and then they came to an agreement on Carlos Correa on a record breaking deal, and then the medicals kind of nixed that, and so then they walked away. But they ended up having a pretty good offseason anyway, and they did what President of Baseball Operations Farhan Zaidi is really good at, which is undervalued free agent signings. He's really good at it. So first, he had Jock Peterson accept the qualifying offer of nineteen point six five million. Then he signed Mitch Hanniger to a three-year, $43.5 million deal. He inked outfielder Michael Conforto to a two-year, $36 million deal. And then he focused on the pitching staff, bringing in starting pitcher Sean Manaya, two years, $25 million. Ross Stripling, two years, $25 million. Taylor Rogers for the bullpen at three years and $33 million. And then finally, Luke Jackson at the back end of the bullpen at two years and $11.5 million. So uh, they were active. Uh, they got better. They'll be competitive. They won't make it to October playoffs, but they, you know, they got a chance to win more than they lose or finish at 500 or finish a game or two below. But they'll either be in third or fourth place in the NL West. OK. All right. Third or fourth place in the NL West. It's a competitive division here. Let's talk about what they've got from a fantasy standpoint. Let's see what we like, what we're interested in, what doesn't do it for us. Uh, we'll start going around the diamond here. Joey Bart. Behind the plate with Roberto Perez backing him up. Austin wins there as well. Uh, they've got penciled in here Lamonte Wade slash Wilmer Flores at first base. Tyro Estrada at second. Um, they've got David Villar, who's banged up right now, at third. They also have J.D. Davis, the former Met, at the hot corner. Brandon Crawford is banged up right now, so that could move. Uh, you know, what we're going to see over at shortstop here, maybe Estrada moves over and Flores plays second. There's a lot of stuff happening there. Conforto, Yastrzemski, Peterson, uh, and then let, and Hanniger right now with the, uh, with the outfield slash DH. Anybody you're interested in? Who are you most interested in? How about that? Yeah, I'll probably go with Michael Conforto. Um, and my interest would be as a fifth outfielder in fantasy. Not a one, two, three, or four, but a fifth. I do think mm -hmm. he could hit 20 home runs for them. I don't love the ballpark for him. I love the person, and I think he'll have a chance to rebound. I'm not sure he'll get to his prime caliber talent that he had with the New York Mets, but I do think 20 homers is realistic for him. So I, I like him. I like Hanniger, some, but he's always injured. You know, yeah. he's always got something wrong. And I guess maybe in certain leagues, Thyro Estrada makes sense as a second baseman or a middle infielder. You know, depending on how your draft goes, if you go late and there's just not enough left, uh, you know, and he'll end up qualifying at second, short, and middle infield. So I guess for those three positions or depth off the bench, he could make sense. But, you know, this is more of a, to me, reality team than a fantasy team, right? I think in reality, they may win more than they lose, but their team, they're, they're, the way their team is made up is not going to move the needle when it comes to fantasy. They, they just don't have that quality players. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of in that same boat with you as well. I have shares of Conforto uh, as a as a number five or number six outfielder. You don't have to reach to get him. He's available to you super late in drafts. And even though he's having himself a, a hot spring, his ADP really hasn't moved all that much. So keep that in mind when you're uh, when you're looking late for uh, for some power possibilities. I like Estrada. I like the second base shortstop eligibility. That he does have, and you know, listen. There's a little bit of pop, and there's a little bit of speed. So, you know, if I can get twelve to fifteen home runs out of Estrada and get twelve to fifteen stolen bases from him as well, considering again what you're paying for to get Estrada and the position flexibility, 
Uh, I'm, I'm definitely in for that. I've, I've found, Jim, that when I'm waiting on second base a lot, then that's kind of where I end up going. I end up looking at Estrada because I think, you know, even just 12 to 15 stolen bases is going to be a huge boost, even though we expect stolen bases to be up across the board. Yeah, that makes sense for me as well, Howard. So I like that call. Let's get to the starting pitching. Um, they've got some interesting guys. Logan Webb, who normally you know can give you some bulk and also a pretty low ERA, knows how to pitch. You're not going to get the strikeout you want. But uh, Anthony DiSclefani is a good bounce-back candidate. Has sown the ball well at times this spring. Um, a lot of people like Alex Cobb because he pitched really well last year. Uh, I know you have Sean Manaya on one of your teams, um, Ross Stripling, the former Blue Jay, Alex Wood, other options. So, you know, one of the reasons why I think they can finish 500 or slightly above is because, you know, they're sitting there with six starters that should be able to keep them in games. Um, and then we get to the bullpen. They have an impact closer in Camilo Duvall, who's as good a closer as there is in baseball. And it's a closer that I've targeted in, in a lot of leagues. And I've got him, I think, in three of my 12 as my main closer. Um, I like him a lot, and I'm also confident he is going to get the saves in San Francisco, which is, of course, one of the keys to drafting closers in 2023. And Doval, I mean, you watched him last night in the Puerto Rico uh, game against the Dominican Republic. He's throwing 102 and just blowing gas. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Doval. I'm very, you know, I've, I've kind of found myself in that range of closers as well. Uh, at times, you know, the starting pitching, I mean, the thing about it is with the, with the, the giants is that they do seem to do well with their reclamation projects. Carlos Rodon had himself a rock solid season last year. Alex Cobb had himself a, a, a nice rebuilding season. We've seen the giants do this before with starting pitchers. It's why, yeah, I did a, uh, I was doing a, a mock draft, which is where I grabbed Manaya the other night. Um, again, because, it's a free pick at the end of the at the end of the draft. And if you're sitting there and you're looking at a at a twelve team league and you're trying to figure out, okay, my late round picks and I want to build out my bench, where do I want to go if you know if I didn't uh invest heavily in starting pitching early, I'll look at some starters late because it's an easy cut. If he doesn't do well, I can just get rid of him. But if the Giants track record shines through with Manaya then maybe that works. It's the same thing with with Ross Stripling, I think, as well. They re, you know they fixed Di Scalfani as well. I mean, he got hurt again, but uh, they still did some uh, some nice work there with uh, with him. So I don't mind that on the uh, on the pitching front, just to take that late round shot. I'm not investing any early picks in them in, in any of these guys though uh, at all. So uh, we like it there. What about um, the farm system? What about possible rookies on the horizon because let's face it you're looking at this team right now and this is a, a team that could struggle with injuries when you've got conforto hanniger jock peterson even um what do you think Anything yeah i don't think up? there's anything in the farm system outside of kyle harrison the left-handed pitcher who can come up at some point and make an impact harrison can be that guy he's not ready he's got great stuff He'll eventually be their number two starter. I don't know if it's going to be this year. Certainly someone to monitor. I'd want him in a dynasty league. I just don't see the pathway with the rotation they have right now with Webb, DiSclefani, Cobb, Mania, Stripling, and Wood. I don't see how you're going to get him there. So I think he just develops. Um, I do love shortstop Marco Luciano, who I've been watching for a long time. He's not going to be ready. Um, Casey Schmidt, third base, maybe. If David VR falls flat in his face, Casey Schmidt might be a guy. Um, a lot of scouts love uh, Lewis Matos, the outfielder. I haven't seen him enough, to be honest with you, to have that, that opinion. But I have a lot of my good baseball friends that are all over Matos. And uh, there are people that like Von Brown a lot. Again, I haven't seen a lot of Von Brown. All right, so nothing imminent here on the horizon. That's, uh, you know, disappointing on one level. And then on another level, at least you can uh, eliminate looking through the Giants' call-ups and seeing who you – who you like now what happens if this team Jim they suddenly start to compete and they uh, and they and they suddenly you know they, they start are in striking distance of a wild card um, are is the front office going to make a run for it are they going to go for it or are they just you know uh, are they going to sit and try and keep rebuilding oh I think they're always going to try to win you know that I mean they, they never want they want to they they 
that's just how they are. I mean, Farhan Zaidi, is, it, it feels like in the market of San Francisco, you can't rebuild, you can retool, but he's going to always try to compete and win. So if he has a chance to do that, he'll do that. You know, he loves the undervalued players. And by the way, if someone wanted to dump a big contract, they'd take it. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they have resources. That's not a problem. They have money they can't spend. That stadium's completely paid for. They, they're bringing in the cash. So that's why they made a $360 million offer to Judge and a $350 million offer to Correa. They have money if someone will go there. They just can't seem to recruit the superstar yet. It's so weird. I wonder why. I wonder why. San Francisco, it's such a great town. Is that sarcasm? Maybe. All right, let's uh, let's wrap up our San Francisco Giants coverage here, Jim. As always, I like one sleeper, and I like one bust. What do you got? All right, with a sleeper, I'm going to go with Michael Conforto like we talked about. Um, he's kind of under the radar. People don't remember. He missed all of last year with a shoulder surgery. He comes in with, you know, all the – you know, injury risk that that's with a guy that missed last year. And I think he could be a sleeper and hit you 20 home runs, maybe even 25. Um, I, I I'll always bet on the person and I've always been a fan of Michael Conforto, the person. So I like his swing. So I'll go with Michael Conforto as a sleeper and the bust. I'm going Alex Cobb salad. Um, you know, it just, sometimes if you have a Cobb salad and you have a spoiled egg, the whole salad's ruined. And, you know, Alex Cobb's had an up and down year. And uh, yeah, I just, I think he might. This might be the year the egg gets sour, old, or disgusting. Grosser. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go, folks. Uh, you might be a little nauseated there. I, I'm feeling a little queasy just thinking about a spoiled egg on my Cobb salad. That's no good. So there are the San Francisco Giants for you. Fantasy, uh, fantasy implications, not abundant. Not abundant by any stretch of the imagination. So... Uh, keep that in mind as you're getting ready, and you can catch any of our team previews that we've done already. Go look at the SXM app, search Fantasy Alarm. You can also go over to FantasyAlarm.com and uh, and look for the front office insights inside the Fantasy Baseball Draft Guide.